Hello, this video will be covering the eDoctrina's answer verification tool. As you may or may not know, there are many avenues of how you can record data, uh, assessment data that is, for students within your district, your school, or your classroom. You know, basically, you know, there are many avenues uh, and, you know, the, the end of the story, the teacher has to verify the answers that have been entered, you know, whether you're scanning using the traditional method, scanning using webcams, or offering online assessments. So to navigate over to the answer verification tool, we're going to have to go over to the answer entry screen right here, and it's going to navigate you right over to the teacher dashboard. Other ways to get to the teacher dashboard, you go up to the quick links and select the teacher dashboard right there to navigate you to the same exact location. So whenever you're offering an assessment, you've already either printed out answer sheets and offered uh, the assessment to your students and scanned them in. Uh, you've offered it, uh, you know, made the test window and students have entered in responses. But either way, you're going to have to select the group of students that you are going to uh, be verifying the answers for, whether you're selecting the course that they're enrolled in. You're then going to have to select the class specifically. As you can see, I've you know selected grade four math for this, uh, you know, teacher Joe Jones. If you haven't realized, I am logged in as a teacher at the Key West Central School District, um, and I'm analyzing nine students. I have uh, data for eight students coming in from you know multiple different avenues. Uh, and then the last part is we're going to have to go in and select our assessment that we're going to be verifying answers for, and then uh, carry forward um, you know, with our verification process. So I have created an assessment that's called answer verification, and I'm going to move it over here to analyze the data that has been scanned in. Now, the rule of thumb with eDoctrina is you should always pull a class summary report before you go and verify any answers. All right, by pulling this report, and I'm going to run it just as the defaults, and I'm going to see within this report, there are a couple of things to take notice of. You know, if you have attached a grade conversion table, you could see that, you know, the students' names are color-coded according to the conversion table that has been imported, um, you know, attached to the assessment. Then you're also going to see a bunch of different uh, data points here, you know, what the student score is, what it's out of, what's the percentage, uh, and also if the student has no data. And I did include one student that has no data, so you could sit there and take a look how that appears here. The one thing that you're going to see if a student needs answers to be verified, you will see a link that says open answer entry to review. If you only see one, it's good to just go ahead and click on that uh, link. It'll navigate you over to the answer verification screen. As you notice, there is only one student listed, and that's because we clicked on the hyperlink for that student. I'm going to exit out of this tab because I want to pull the whole answer entry for the whole class, being that there are multiple ones to verify, as you can see right here. So I'm going to exit out of this uh, class summary report. And I'm going to go over and just, uh, you know, click on this Check Student Answers uh, button, which is going to navigate us directly to the Answer Verification screen. As you can see, there is a bunch of data that has been processed here. All right, some things to note about this Answer Verification screen. You will see the, uh, the you know, the assessment ID with the assessment name listed right here. If you click on that, uh, you know, assessment uh, hyperlink, you will be navigated right into the assessment. So you'll be able to see what the specific assessment looks like and all the certain details about the questions. That's the first hyperlink. All right, now you're gonna notice how they're all different colors. Uh, you know, green stands for a right answer, red stands for an incorrect answer, yellow need, uh, stands for something that potentially needs to verify. If you need a key that's going to um, you know, guide you to help you understand what these color codes mean in the symbols, you can click on the help button right up here and it's gonna bring you up a nice little key uh, that's gonna tell you exactly what each one of these mean. So the thing is you see gray means no data, you know, white means you know, this represents a question with data, obviously green is correct, red is incorrect, yellow is an excluded question that has either been selected uh, by the teacher or the student if that's a you know, option that is provided. A asterisk with the yellow background, there's been multiple uh, answers detected on an answer sheet. That does happen a lot because students will end up bubbling in potentially two bubbles when they're only supposed to do one or they'll bubble one in, cross it off and bubble in another one, you know, and that's if they have, you know, using pen and they can't erase that certain bubble. 
The yellow background just represents there was an answer choice that's not selected, and black is going to represent that the question has been excluded from the assessment. And you'll be able to, you know, choose to exclude a question, you know, if there's a scenario where you would like to not include a certain que uh, question in the whole calculation of the grade. So I'm going to close that out. And you're going to see another couple details uh, about this. If you ever want to delete assessment data, you could delete it for the whole class by clicking the trash can right here. You're going to notice how it's going to be all disappeared. Do you also want to remove the attached images for the answer sheets? And I'm going to say no because I don't want to do that right now. But the thing is, I'm going to go ahead and restore those by clicking that. Now, the point of this is just in case you accidentally click it, because if I accidentally click this, click this, you'll be able to restore them uh, for the this session and this session alone. If you happen to hit the save and close button, you know those responses will be gone and uh, you will not be able to recover them. Now you're going to notice uh, right here in this verify column, we have one, two, and three checkboxes that are unselected. This means that these need to be verified. And if you remember correctly from my class summary report, there were three hyperlinks that were available for uh, you know assessment data that needs to be verified. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, you know check on these in a second, but I have a couple more things to explain. If you have an image icon right here, this is going to provide as a hyperlink to the scan image uh, that has been done traditionally in this matter. As you notice, this is a traditional answer sheet. All right, you're going to go down, and I know I did scan in the couple that were electronic or the web bubble sheets. As you can see, it's gridded out and has all the responses, uh, you know, registered right there. All right, then you're also going to notice that if you have a calendar, this is going to indicate that you have some online assessment statistics, and this is going to note whenever a student has started an assessment and then whenever they have finished the assessment. You know, these are great indicators because, you know, if a student potentially has a subpar grade, you know, you might be able to examine, you know, when they started the assessment and if they finished it, you know, two minutes later, you know that they didn't uh, spend the, you know, an ample amount of time trying to, uh, you know, get a positive grade on this assessment. All right, so the other part that you're going to notice is that these percentages represent the scores of the student as you load this page. And I said as you load this page because if I go ahead and I change one of these to the incorrect answer, you're going to notice that this percentage does not change. All right, the only way that you could see that change is if I go and revisit this page. So I'm going to go ahead and save and close just to show you that effect. All right, so we're going to go and regenerate this answer entry screen. And you're going to notice that now, whenever I reloaded the page, it has now reflected uh, that grade change. And the only reason why this happens is because whenever you initially visit this answer verification screen, it's going to load reports that accompany this. So if I go ahead and click on this 86, it's going to bring me to the individual student report for this assessment for that certain student that I've selected. You know, and this wouldn't let you drill down further on, you know, potentially what is, uh, you know, the student has responded and what the grades are and, you know, so, uh, certain different things. You're going to notice this number seven has been excluded for this student. And another indicator that you have that exclude is you see that this X and yellow background has been selected. All right, I'm going to go ahead and analyze this a little bit further. Let's click on the image. All right, you could actually see that number seven has been bubbled in to exclude this question from this assessment. And this, this uh, you know, score will not be calculated into the final average. All right, so those are options that are available from whenever you print the bubble sheet. If you want to have those little X's appear, you're just going to have to, you know, pick this show, uh, you know, part 1x, which I'll take you over there and show you right now. If I go to print the answer sheets, and I wanted to print the bubble sheets, all right, you'll see this show x part 1 and show x part 2. Part 1 will give the exclude option for the uh, multiple choice and true, false, and number questions, and then the part 2 will be give you the exclude option for teacher scored questions. All right, I'm going to navigate back to the answer entry screen. 
But you can see that the ones that I need to verify are the ones that, you know, eDoctrina did not know exactly what to choose whenever, you know, the student, uh, you know, whenever this answer sheet was scanned in. You know, it is, by the way, a computer doing it, and there is some human interaction that we need to do to verify these answers. So I'm going to go ahead and look at what has happened here. And the cool thing about these scanned images is that they're gridded out, and I could see that question number two, it looks like they X'd out the, the answer choice C and then proceeded to answer with B. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And I can see that that is exactly what the student wanted to respond with. And now you can see that it's uh, you know highlighted in green. I could also go in and, and um, you know bubble in these answers uh, for teacher score questions. So potentially, if I wanted to change the score of this one to you know this um, this value instead of this value, I could certainly do so. Here, I'm going to leave as uh, you know it doesn't. It looks like they just bubbled in two without crossing one out. So the thing is, I'm going to go ahead and say that I have now verified this student's responses. If you cannot see the bubble sheet, if you notice, I just clicked on this little magnifying glass and it goes ahead and brings up a larger image and then you know from there you can go ahead and you know zoom in and zoom out if you need to all right so we're going to go ahead and say that that one has been verified and we're going to go ahead and click that all right i am then going to well actually in this case i need to go and say that you know they meant to choose answer b all right and this one was the one that they uh basically you know chose two answers for so I'm going to go ahead and verify that, and I'm going to exclude it from, you know, any other, uh, you know, saves, uh, changes that need to be made. All right, the other one that needs to be verified is this Neil Culligan. You can see that he has basically scanned this in, you know, through a web answer sheet. Now, these web answer sheets can be scanned in via your iPhone app or iPad app or Android app, as well as uh, you know a document camera or the built-in camera on your computer. This one you can see has been laid down on the desk and scanned in that way. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look to see, well, it's uh, question number four that needs to be verified and you can see that this student did not actually respond to a question. So the thing is, I'm saying that that is a-okay. And then you see down here, basically the teacher has not scored these ones, but the thing is, if it is yellow, remember, it says that this represents a question where no, where an answer choice was not selected. So we're gonna go through and take a look at this, and you could actually see that the teacher did not fill these in, and basically I have to go and say, all right, well, let's give these a certain grade, and I'm gonna say, let's just give it a six, a seven, and a five and as you can see whenever i modify them you can see they become highlighted in blue indicating that i have uh, as the teacher modified those answers and i'm going to go ahead and say that this is verified and i'm going to click this exclude button as well i'm going to save and now you can see that the the blue highlights have now gone away and, and you know it has now been updated the last one that i need to check is this online statistic and this is just because the teacher has not recorded the grade yet. Now, what you can see is the student responses. If I click on this black triangle, you would see the student answer that's located right here. In this case, I'm going to go to a question where a student did respond. And I'm going to go ahead and click it. And you see the student answer would be right there. If it does not fit in the window, you do have the option to expand it out to uh, you know, review what this student actually responded. And then you could provide a grade for that specific question. I'm going to provide it to six. If I want to go to the next question, I'm going to go hit next. All right. And then the thing is, what is the contrapositive? If I go to school, then I will be smart. OK, if I do not go to school, then I'm not smart. All right, that's exactly the right answer, so I'm going to give it an 8. All right, and then the next one, uh, basically, it's another math question, and it looks like, you know, explain why the lines are parallel, and, you know, you have a response right here that the student entered, and we're going to give it a 6. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and say set score, and you can see that now these three that I just graded are highlighted in blue as soon as I hit save. All right, they are now updated without any blue highlighted around it. And I'm going to say that I've verified those answers. These ones right here, they're yellow, which is going to indicate why this verified button uh, or checkbox is not selected. 
So the thing is, I'm going to view if they have a student answer, and the answer is no, they don't. Go to the next question, no answer, good, zero. And then the next one's going to be no answer, so we're going to go zero as well. Then we're going to say set score, and you can see that this student got all zeros for that because they did not respond to the question. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and say verify. All right, at this point in time, I have all of these have been verified. All right, so next time I pull this teacher or the class summary report, which is going to be right here, all right, I should see that there, well, technically there, that, that didn't refresh yet, but the thing is you can see that, you know, a couple of the students, uh, they do not have this link anymore. So the thing is um, we're going to go ahead and click on it to see what needs to be verified. And you could actually see that it has not been verified. So the thing is, I'm going to go ahead and hit save and close. All right. And now that basically, you know, that's going to refresh and those links should go away. If you have the gray background, that means there is no data for this student. Um, you know, another thing to note about this screen is that if you want to get a specific item response for this group of students, you can click on the hyperlink for that, and you get a nice little uh, item analysis report for that specific question. Within these item analysis reports, you can view which students got certain or responded to the question some certain way. You can see the standards that are uh, you know attached to these um, you know questions, and you could also view the question specifically, all right, and with the correct answer. So that's another cool thing about this report that, you know, you have the item analysis report, you know, that's linked to it. You have an individual student report that would be linked to it. And obviously, if you hover over these, you could see how the uh, percentage is calculated. Same thing with right here. You can see how the percentage is calculated for this question. So the thing is, this percentage will analyze this column. This percentage will analyze this row. Another cool thing about this is that if you select on the number right here, you can see the standard that is attached to this. All right, so this screen is a very, very busy screen. There's a lot of things that are going to be happening with this screen. So, um, you know, it's very good to become familiar with it. All right, the last part of this, um, you know, tool is you do have the ability to quick grade some of these. And I'm, I just have uh, Javier included in here because I wanted to show you this feature. You know, I just wanted to go in and mark him wrong for one of his questions. All right, and then you could actually see that the rest of them, and I have all correct selected right here. So if I go ahead and hit save from here, you could see that what would you like to do for the questions you did not change? Leave them unanswered. That's the default, so that's usually what you would do. But the thing is, if you want a quick grade and just mark the wrong answers, you can, and you say assign the correct answers to this student. All right, and another thing you're going to notice in the background that this is, you know, the checkbox for exclude is not selected. That's why this would come up. And I'm going to go ahead and proceed. As you can see, that all the answers have been marked correct with full credit for Javier. And like I said, if you want to go and delete this, you can. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. All right. Then the other part of this is if you have the all incorrect, uh, you know, button selected up here, and I go ahead and mark one as correct. All right. So that's going to be B. I can go ahead and hit save and then either leave the rest of them unanswered or assign the incorrect answer to all the other questions. And one thing I did not mention was that the yellow is not going to be calculated into the average. It's basically a zero out of whatever points um, is there. So don't worry if you have yellows. If you verify that they, you know, they don't deserve the grade, then just make sure you check this checkbox right here. But these buttons up here, this all correct and this all incorrect, those are relative to this exclude option right here. If you have this checked, this will not, you know, this tool will not be applicable to this row or for this student right there. So the thing is, that's what that exclude column is all about. Other than that, um, you know, there are, you know, other tools that are affiliated with, but for the purposes of this video, um, you know, I've covered everything that's going to help you be successful in verifying the answers that have been recorded, uh, you know, for your students. And then you can go forward and, you know, start making some data-driven decisions, uh, you know, regarding all your students using eDoctrina. All right. Thank you.